A bad stretch, a really bad stretch costs the Cajuns. It's Locked On Sunbelt. You are Locked On Sunbelt, your daily podcast on the Sunbelt Conference, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. I'm your host, David Schultz. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. Louisiana Raging Cajuns fall to the Tennessee Volunteers 58-55 in the first round of the NCAA tournament uh, in the game. It was a very strange ball game, kind of the way Tennessee plays all year long and not the way that the Raging Cajuns did. All right, the Cajuns had an awful 13 and a half minute stretch, about 412 in the first half and 915 in the second half, uh, and they scored a total of 11 points. The game was tied at 19, and I wouldn't say you blinked because it was a 13 and a half minute stretch, but it was tied at 19, and then it went to 48 to 30, and then the Cajuns came alive. <clears throat> Kobe Julian hit some three-pointers. Jalen Delcourt hit some three-pointers. And they got the ball game. Uh, they got really as close as five. I know the final score was three. Tennessee missed some free throws down the stretch, although they made some. And um, the Cajuns never really had the ball down, you know, two or three at the end. They never had a chance. They had a chance to get a stop and get a bucket, but they never they never did, right? They, uh, or they needed two buckets. So they never they never got that shot. I think they got as close... Well, I guess they got as close as three points. They got they got as close 56-53 is what they did. They they actually got a stop with about under a minute left, and Kobe Julian got fouled, kind of bowled his way to the bucket, and they got within three, but that was as, basically as close as they got. They never had the ball uh, with a chance to tie or take uh, the lead. Uh, Jordan Brown was really good, best player in the court, 16 points, seven rebounds. Uh, but, again, the pace was Tennessee's. Even – it's 19 apiece with five minutes to go, four minutes to go in the first half. Even if Tennessee is down like 25, 21 at half, they're like, We're, this is what we want. This is our kind of ball game. Uh, and they had all kinds of issues hanging on to the ball. 12 turnovers in the first half. Cajuns had a bunch of turnovers. Uh, they had eight in the first half. Uh, Michael Thomas came in and, you know, tried to give Themis Folks a break. And he turned the ball over three times immediately. Jalen Delcourt came in the ball game early on to replace Greg Williams, who, Appears is still banged up a little bit after getting stepped on at the Sunbelt Commerce Tournament. Uh, And he came in and he forced two turnovers immediately. Uh, The Cajuns needed to hit some threes in the first half. They were 0 for 6 from 3 in the first half. So that was a problem. Uh, And they went cold when Jordan Brown got a couple of fouls. And unfortunately, they weren't when he was defending. One was trying to get a maybe a defensive rebound. And the other one, he was boxing out. He was over the top on one, and the other one who was, uh, I think he was over the top on his first foul and his second foul. I think he was trying to get an offensive rebound. I think the Cajuns had the ball when his second foul. Maybe, maybe not. But um, either way, or maybe the first one was an offensive rebound, and the second one he was boxing out defensively, and, and then the Cajuns went cold. Um, they could not score, and all of a sudden Tennessee could not miss. You know, Tennessee started out the ball game like five and nine from the floor, which is really hot for Tennessee. Then they went one of eight. And then I think they hit like 10 or 14 shots between the first half and the second half. And when Tennessee gets hot like that and they play defense the way they do, it's really tough to keep up. Uh, Themis Folks had an interesting ball game. We'll get back. We'll get into that uh, as well uh, a little bit later on. Uh, but you can't go 13 and a half minutes if you're the Cajuns and score 11 points. That's, that's just not going to work. All right, the Cajuns are a high-powered offense, and they played really good defense against Tennessee outside of those 13 and a half minutes. Um, You know, Tennessee scored 58 points. If you're the Raging Cajuns and you tell me Tennessee scored 58 points, I think the Cajuns win the ballgame. I would have thought that that I thought I would have thought that Tennessee would have needed, you know, in in the low to mid 60s to win the game. You know, probably win it. You know, 65, 60, 63, 58. I I would have thought that the Cajuns would have won the ballgame if you tell me that. Tennessee has 58 points. But that's the way Tennessee's played, right? 
kept on throwing the ball over. I mean, just some, you know, people are falling down and setting picks and just throwing the ball away. It was really ugly. Really ugly. And then the Cajuns couldn't hang on to it. Themis Folks had some bad turnovers. We said Michael Thomas had some bad turnovers. Uh, so I don't know. I, it would be interesting to know how, how the Cajuns feel about this one because while close down the stretch, it wasn't a close ball game throughout. Well, no, it, it, it kind of was. I, I'm sorry. It was it was close in the first half, right? The the um, the balls jumped out to a 10-4 to lead. Cajuns take an 11-10 to lead. Then... The balls, I think, went up like 19 to 11, and then the Cajuns tied it up 19. So it's close for the first 15 minutes of the game, for 16 minutes of the game. And then the balls finished the first half on an 11 nothing run, including a tip in with two seconds left to go. Uh, so instead of a close ball game at half, it is 30 to 19. All right. Now the Cajuns come out in the second half. And get a bucket and had a three rim in and out. So incredibly, it could have been quickly. It could have been, you know, 30 to 19. It could have gone 30 to 24. That's not the way that it went, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it went from, it went from 30 to 19 to 48 to 30. And again, between four minutes and 12 seconds and 10 minutes and 45 seconds is your bulk. All right. Uh, we'll go over the stats. But again, when you you get outscored twenty nine to eleven, it's tough to overcome that in the NCAA tournament. It re- it really is, unless it's right at the beginning of the ball game. Uh, think of it. Think of if if it's a twenty six to fifteen run, or a twenty five to twelve run, or a twenty seven to seventeen run. Right. I mean, the Vols needed every bit of that run to stave off the Cajuns' run of their own which was a 13 nothing run. It was funny because Dan Bonner and Stan Van Gundy are saying, you know, there's, they're not going to get an 18 nothing run. They almost did. <laughs> they almost, a couple more stops and a couple more buckets. They would have been really close to that 18 nothing run. Uh, but they did get them back, th- themselves back into it. They should be proud, right? I got to, you got to, got to have a little bit of pride, right? I mean, it was 48 to 30. It very well could have been a 25 point ball game, right? If Kobe Julian and Delcourt missed their shots, you know, Tennessee is off and running and, Uh, The Cajuns are just playing it out. Instead, they made him sweat a little bit. Would have been nice to see him sweat just a little bit more. Because I didn't like that at halftime when Barkley, you know, is that, you know, can can the Cajuns get back into it? And they said no, because they should be leading with all the turnovers that Tennessee had. Well, they didn't hit any threes. Usually when you're 0 for 6 from 3, you're not going to be winning the ball game. Regardless of the other team is turning the ball over. But all you got to do is hit some threes, and you got back in the ball game. And that's what happened. Hit some threes. They got back in the ball game uh, because you knew Tennessee was not going to stay hot uh, as they were over that stretch from 412 to about 1045. Uh, All right, we'll go over more details from the ball game after this, but let me tell you a little bit about FanDuel. Now is the time to download FanDuel because it's the midway point of the NBA season, and FanDuel is America's number one sports book because new customers get a no sweat first bet. Up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drain. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss a chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on. To learn more, make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of uh, the NBA. All right, Dave Schultz with more Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day, recapping the Cajuns' 58-55 to loss to Tennessee. Two things can be true at the same time. A couple things can be true at the same time. Uh, Jordan Brown was the best player on the court, which we previewed, and we said that he would be, 16-7. and And for a bit, uh, Eric Kane was right that from Locked On Vols that – Jordan Brown can get his, but don't let anybody else get theirs. And until Kobe Julian, you know, at the 10-minute mark of the second half, and Jalen Delcourt started hitting threes, like the Cajuns weren't, there was no Robin at all to Jordan Brown being bad. There was there was no help at all. The thing is, folks, it's very odd. I know Tennessee's got some big guys in there, but he didn't even look like he was trying to shoot. Um, two for seven overall. I think he finished with, what was it, seven points? He did get a bucket at the end. He finished with five points. That includes a layup at the, at the you know, 
game buzzer. Uh, and so uh, the Cajuns came back uh, because they finally got some help. Um, and it just wasn't, it wasn't enough. Uh, for Tennessee, um, again, if you tell me that Sebastian Vescovy has three points on one of three shooting, I'm going to tell you that Tennessee lost by 10 points. All right. Um, Meshack had 11 points. He was the only starter in score in uh, double figures. And you had Key, Tyree Key, with uh, 12 points. Again, the statistics are really interesting because they're kind of close. The only thing that's not close is the free throw. The shooting, Cajuns actually make one more, uh, one more shot. Tennessee shot 45%. Reggie Cajuns shot 40. Cajuns actually made two more threes than Tennessee. The free throws was a difference. Cajuns only made five out of nine of free throws. Tennessee, 12 of 21. I mean, this game almost did come down to the free throw line because Tennessee kind of kept the Cajuns into it. Um, turnovers were a big deal, though. 18 turnovers by Tennessee. Someone's going to tell you that that kept the Cajuns into it. But the Cajuns turned it over 14 times. So uh, I think the turnovers were were basically a wash. They were saying at halftime, well, if Tennessee doesn't turn the ball over, it would be a much bigger lead than 11. Well, yeah, but if the Cajuns didn't turn the ball over as much as they did, they would be closer. So I didn't quite understand uh, that one. Uh, but, you know, the Cajuns just, they, they, it was 48 to 30, and I thought the game was over, like over. And then Julian, 48 33. Julian again, 48 36. And all of a sudden, 18 point is 12, right? And then they got some turnovers. They got some stops. Uh, I think Julian hit another one. Delcourt hit, hit a couple. And the Cajuns were right back in the ballgame. It's one of those things, like, if you're down a lot and you run out of gas. I don't think they run out, ran out of gas because, first of all, the comeback was really quick. Let me see what I wrote. Uh, they, they scored, like, 11 points. In the, here you go. In the first 19... 15 of the first of the second half, the Cajuns had 11 points. In the next 326, they scored 13. That's how quick their comeback was. They weren't working all that hard. You know, it wasn't like we're down, we wasn't down like the Cajuns were down like 20 and spent all second half getting back in the ballgame. It went from 48 to 30 to 48 to 43. So it was really quick. And then they called timeout. Tennessee did. So they weren't exactly tired, I don't think. Uh, they were tired or ran out of gas. You got to give Tennessee credit. They have been in these ball games uh, all season long. Uh, they made some shots. Uh, the, Ca the Cajuns missed some shots up close, missed a layup, had another shot blocked. And uh, Joe Charles with a, you know, poor decision to, to drive to the hoop when the defender was in front of him to get a charge. So, you know, instead of climbing in back into the ball game and getting it closer than 50 to 45, all of a sudden it's 54, 45. I think Delcourt made another three to make it six. And it did get to 56, 53, and Tennessee's making free throws. Uh, although I, I would have liked to see them go to the bucket down 57, 53. I know there wasn't a whole lot of time left, but if you get that layup, then you got to make, then they got to make two shots to, you know, make the three not work. Of course, they missed one of those two free throws at that point in time. So who knows what would happen if they made the layup. Uh, Delcourt had a three. I can't go crazy about that. And there wasn't a whole lot of time. So you got to you gotta do what you can get. Uh, I would rather see them go to the bucket and see what you can do uh, with that. So it would be interesting to talk to Bob Marlin and, and I know some of the coaches. I don't know any of the players. Um, but I do know the coaches. And, you know, do you, you, do you let one slip away? Um, you certainly had a shot. Right at the end, you got to be proud of the guys for not giving up. Again, it very well could have been a 25-point game. And you look up and it's a five-point game and you lost by three. And you just played, not poorly for half of the game, but like 13 minutes. You know, again, if, if the stretch was instead of 29 to 11, you know, and 27-15, right? 25 to 12, right? You know, you, you know but a 29 to 11 run in the middle of a game when it's tied is tough to overcome. And that's, and that's what happened. So uh, kudos to Tennessee uh, for hanging in there. Could have very easily lost that ball game. Their leading scorer scored three points, right? They're the leading scorer in the game comes off the bench. They very easily could have done it again. It would have been nice to see 
if they could, if the Cajuns could have gotten the ball game tied, I'm going to take the lead is a little much, but be in a spot where Tennessee has to make a hoop, like with like 40 seconds left, even a minute, right? Make it like a minute and it's a three point game. See what Tennessee does then. All right. When the pressure's on. All right. See if they can make a hoop, see if they can get fouled. That's what I would like to see. Right. Because again, it doesn't take much when these teams are playing it. I, I think it's a, it's a mental game. It shouldn't matter, but it does, right? If you're playing in a game that's back and forth and you're up three with the ball, you've been under the pressure the whole time. But if you were up 18 and you look up and it's a three-point game and you have the ball, now you're feeling it. Now it's not like we need this bucket to win. We're trying not to lose. And when you're doing not to lose – that's got to be much more tough. That's got to be tougher mentally than we're trying to win the ball game. Again, if you're in a like a you know three to five point game all game long, it's one thing. But when you were leading by 18 and all of a sudden you look up and it's five points, that's why you got to give Tennessee credit. They very easily could have, I don't want to say mail it in, but you know, I think they hit three straight buckets, uh, or at least a couple of buckets to go up by nine, and they they got some good defense, right? They yeah, it was 48. Yeah, they hit like three straight buckets. Went from 48, 45 to 54, 45. And the Cajuns, although didn't go away again, uh, couldn't quite get that one stop or that big bucket to make it a one possession game. And Tennessee's got to do something special with it, right? It was a two possession game, like 56, 51. And uh, Tennessee missed. That's how the Cajuns got to a three point game. And then they had to follow because there was 20 seconds left. Huh? But kudos to the Cajuns. Again, great season. They were picked to win the Sun Belt. They didn't win the regular season, but they won the thing that counted. You know, Cajuns and mid majors seasons come down to one weekend out of the year. And um, this one, you know, they, they, they won what they had to, and they had a shot against an SEC foe that is banged up, admittedly, you know, is banged up. If Zakai Ziegler, Tough to say if Sakai Ziegler was still there, you know, I don't think it would have been much of a ball game. But if Sakai Ziegler wasn't hurt, I'm not sure the Cajuns would have been playing Tennessee. <laughs> so there's a whole thing uh, about that. Uh, all right, let's take a timeout. When we come back, South Alabama is starting spring football practice on Friday. We've already spoken to Kane Womack. Craig Stevenson from AL.com goes over the uh, position battles, and there are not many of them. And so we will talk about that when uh, we come back. Uh, but Built Bar March Madness is here. And let me tell you, I need them because I'm not ashamed to tell you, I put on a couple of pounds visiting with Mama Schultz last week in Syracuse, New York. The Built March Madness bracket is here. And we know you have a favorite bar or puff. And now is your time to make it count. Go to BuiltMarchMadness.com to vote for your favorites. You know I'll be voting for the churro puff. And if you want the churro puff to win, then you'll be voting for that bar too. Support your team, support your bar or puff. And when you vote for your favorite bar or puff, you'll be entered into a drawing where 50 lucky Locked On listeners will get a free box of Built. Not only that, one Locked On fan will win a 12-month subscription to Built and have Built Built's best bars or puffs delivered monthly straight to your door. You got to try Built. Built, the best protein bar ever. Seriously, they're so amazing, you won't think they're good for you. What makes Built bars and puffs so good? Well, for starters, they're all high in protein, low in sugar, and covered in 100% real chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. Run to BuiltMarchMadness.com right now to vote for your favorite bar or puff and pick up a box while you're there. You can vote every day in March. So hop in and support your pick. Again, I need I need some more. I ran out of them. So I'm not ashamed. You know, I got steak. I got barbecue. I had chocolate pie, probably a little bit too much ice cream, some chicken parm, some meatball subs. I had some good cooking when I was up in central New York uh, and uh, put on a couple of pounds. And Built Bar is going to help me shape up and trim up again. All right, uh, Dave Schultz, Locked On Sun Belt, your team every day. Uh, South Alabama opening up spring football. And I like Craig's, uh, Craig Stevenson from AL.com. We'll see if we get Craig on next week. <laughs> he starts off his uh, he starts off his uh, article on Thursday. For the first time in recent memory, Jaguars enter the spring with a secure number one quarterback in Carter Bradley. <laughs> so that is one thing they don't have to work, uh, worry about. And in the day and age of... The transfer portal to have your starting quarterback return is big. Worked out for the Raging Cages with Levi Lewis for three years. And obviously for uh, South Alabama coming off a 10-win season with Carter Bradley leading the offense, it is big as well. Craig does list five position battles, and I'll copy this and put his article in our comment section if you want to see it. 
A uh, wide receiver will be interesting. Devin Voice and Colin Lacey are back, but now you got to replace Jalen Wayne. And, you know, do you move Voice and or Lacey who were really good in the positions they were at and just try to find somebody who fits the mold of, of Jalen Wayne? Or do you move Voice and or L Lacey into the Jalen Wayne role? Craig lists off some guys who would be feasible uh, at that spot. Uh, the center, the uh, the uh, Jaguars have to replace James Jackson, offensive line. Um, he anchored the offensive line, as Craig says, last two years after transferring from Mississippi State. Uh, you got outside linebacker. And right now, apparently those guys are hurt in the spring. They're expected back for fall. Interestingly enough, C.J. Rias transferred and ended up at McNeese. Take that for what it is. All right. A uh, cornerback, you got to replace Terrell Luter Jr. And former Ole Miss transfer Jamar uh, Richardson. And, and then you get safety where <coughs> you may have too much. Yam Banks was the first team all Sunbelt Conference selection. Jaden Voison, as Craig says, was a revelation, leading the teams in tackles. Ole Miss transfer, Jalen Jordan, stepped in for the injured, injured Keith Gallman, who's back. And so you got Banks, Voice, and Jordan, and Gallman, who could all be on the field at the same time. So um, there are a few position battles for South Alabama. The key to spring ball is just finish it up healthy. That's all you want to do. You just want to be healthy when you're starting summer, right? You want to get in, get any of the transfers or the early enrollees uh, up to speed, and then hopefully you, you're just healthy Heading into, uh, you know, summer balls, you know, fall practice. I don't know why we call it fall practice. It's always at the end of July, beginning of August. So. And again, remember, South Alabama has an interesting schedule, starting off with Tulane, and then I think Southeastern, and then Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. Oklahoma State. Sorry, the Cowboys. Oklahoma State. Here's the thing that I did not realize. Can you have a season opener and that be a trap game? Is that feasible? South Alabama's going to New Orleans to take on Tulane. You know who's going to Tulane and New Orleans after South Alabama? It's Ole Miss. Second game of the year. All these guys are going to be focused on South Alabama for a month and a half, right? When fall practice starts. <clears throat> Except Ole Miss is coming in right behind South Alabama. That's an odd scheduling deal and maybe one that South Alabama can take advantage of. Because if you go in and beat Tulane, I don't know if Tulane will be... <clears throat> um, Ranked, but they'll be somewhere in the top 30. And that'll be a nice win to get the, the Jaguar season off. And maybe, you know, give Oklahoma State all they can handle. That's a long way off, but I'm just saying the schedule is set up for that for the Jaguars. All right. Uh, again, special thanks for tuning in. Uh, I kind of figured that, you know, playing the balls in the NCAA tournament would get uh, a few more views. Uh, I was extremely shocked at how many views I think our original – a preview is over a thousand views, maybe 1100 by now. Uh, thanks to Eric Kane for lockdown balls uh, for doing the crossover one as well. Uh, thanks to the balls fans for, for commenting. Appreciate that. Good feedback from them. Again, we said it was going to be a good ball game and lo and behold, it was a good ball game. So, and I appreciate everybody who is tuning in again, more spring football conference, baseball uh, conference uh, play is starting in baseball. And of course we got softball to go over uh, as well. Uh, anywhere you get your podcast, just search Locked On Sunbelt. Same for YouTube. I will reply to any of the comments that you put in there, uh, good, bad, or otherwise. All right. Once again, thanks very much for tuning in. I'm your host, Dave Schultz. You've been watching Locked On Sunbelt, your team every day. Have a great weekend, everybody. And we will talk to you again on Monday.